so I'm, I'm Carl Street. I actually graduated from the School of Medicine. I'm currently an intern at Bayview, uh, which I guess that makes me a doctor, which is terrifying but exciting at the same time. Um, funny thing is, I got an email from Ignite saying, congrats, we like what you wrote. Please get, give a talk. And I realized I must have submitted this when I was delirious because I couldn't remember what I said I would talk about. So it was, it was an interesting exchange with Andrea saying, hey, what did I send you? Um, so what I wanted to talk about was collecting data for questions yet asked. Uh, essentially, as a doctor, it's my job to really earn your trust through being compassionate and caring, really listening, making good eye contact, like doing that friendly pat on the shoulder every so often. But it's also about being very knowledgeable. I have to know the basics, I have to know about physiology and anatomy, I need to understand all of pharmacology, and I also have to understand population level medicine. It's very difficult to do that especially as I'm still in training. Like, we, we don't just release people after medical school. It'd be ridiculous if you now practice every which way. Um, so what we are confronted with is mountains and mountains of information. Oh. Mountains and mountains of information that is very difficult to actually sift through on your own. So, and this has all been compiled thanks to amazing researchers and clinicians who are just collecting data. Sometimes with a hypothesis in mind, other times they're just collecting data for the sake of collecting data for something in the future. Um, there are thankfully many people much smarter than myself who have actually started sifting through this to provide very concise recommendations, things that I can understand as a clinician on the run about how to actually deal with my patients. So obviously we have great recommendations like, please quit smoking. For the love of God, please stop smoking. Even if you can just cut back to that like half a pack a day instead of that full pack a day. Uh, or we also, from all this data, we also know exactly about maybe how, how your lung physiology changes after one year of quitting, after five years, and after ten years. This is all from data points from large numbers of, uh, of researchers. We know to stop drinking. Please, actually just cut back on that. So we actually don't tell people the truth, is that you might actually be better off drinking, but we don't want to start that because in America people drink to excess, and we just recommend you should just stop. Um, and then, of course, the most recent one is our, our trans fats, uh, which have been tragically targeting our local business of the burger cookie um, because their recipe is so delicious but has so many trans fats. But uh, if you must insist on eating like that, we have wonderful data showing that there are medications to address this and that you should actually take a statin. And that statin is actually, we changed recommendations after another large pile of information was sifted through and analyzed and saying that we can actually start at, uh, statins based on age and risk factors and not worry too much about necessarily the numbers we need to get down, but just focus on the risk. So I'm talking about all this because, as you can see, like I'm wearing a white coat that is weighted down with books because I don't know everything right now, but I have these recommendations to carry with me. And that's what I'm asking for from researchers right now, is how best to actually address specific patients based on their risk factors, their identities, and anything that's going on around them. Because this is my workspace. I have about maybe five to ten minutes to get to know a patient, actually go through their problems, and try and provide some sort of recommendation. It's easier when I have pearls. I don't want to talk about, it's not necessarily seen as stereotyping, but so much as if I can get a better picture of who you are, I can try and fit it together into all the data we already have on people like you. Um, but we, we have a, a glaring gap. This, and this is, why, this is a topic I kind of have addressed a lot in my personal life and one that I've addressed more professionally, is that we have a large gap for on information on lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender patients. We, we have a Probably, I would say, a dearth on transgender individuals. We have a little bit more on bisexual, and then lesbian, gay has been studied significantly, but not the best, most robust data. So, and unfortunately, not only are we not doing a good job of actually collecting the information, we actually do a poor job of treating uh, individuals uh, who are who identify as LGBT or even those who are infected with HIV. Lambda Legal had done a wonderful study aptly called "When Healthcare Isn't Caring" because. We are scaring away patients. Not only do we miss the opportunity to actually collect information from them, we're actually discouraging them from seeing health providers. So it's, it, it's my hope that when we actually start asking these questions, we actually can re, essentially rebuild this relationship that we might have damaged. Uh, there have been studies out of Canada showing that providers that actually just simply ask the question of their sexual orientation will have better relationships with their patients in such, in such a way that lesbians actually will follow more preventive health recommendations from their physician because they have built a trusting relationship just because the physician has signaled that they are willing to work with the patient. One of the organizations that are doing this, of course, are Funway Health out of Boston, which is partnered with uh, MassGen and, and Harvard. There's another wonderful organization in Chicago, Howard Brown, that works with Northwestern, that has been, have been collecting this kind of information, but still on a small scale. 
Um, there are many, many other organizations. The University of California, San Francisco, of course, it actually has its own department focused on school of medicine training. Vanderbilt has recently opened one. Uh, and also our neighbor to the north, uh, University of Pennsylvania, started by an Oslo Marine, actually has started a new department on this matter. And then, of course, we have the big guns. We have the Institute of Medicine report coming out in 2011 saying there is a significant gap in what researchers actually have available to address the needs of the LGBT population. Of course, the recommendations are focused on prior research. They, they notice there's a, possibly a minority stress model that people who experience uh, homophobia, transphobia, actually have worse health care healthcare outcomes. It's hard to actually tease apart why that is or what point in their life, uh, lifeline that actually happens, so we, need, we actually, have, actually have to collect that information. We don't do a great job of collecting it from when they're adolescents to when they're middle-aged to when they're elderly. We do have some ideas of what happened, but we don't actually have the most robust and powerful information. So. And then Fenway has also done a great job of saying, why do we need to collect this information? They, they piece together saying we're actually going to provide more competent care, and then we're actually going to start lining up with guidelines from both the ACA, the Institutes of Medicine, Healthy People 2020, uh, and essentially, the Joint Commission is jumping on board with this as well. So in the next few years, we'll probably see more robust recommendations for schools in medicine. So I kept it brief because I, I remember being in this room and not paying attention for maybe more than 30 seconds at, at a stretch. But uh, I'm saying this more as a clinician who I no longer have the time to do this kind of research like I did before I was in medical school. So I'm asking people to be mindful that when they actually start doing data, collection on a large population that they actually consider asking somebody about their gender, gender identity or sexual orientation. So help build those mountains. Please sift through them. I need more books to carry in my bucket. So thank you for your time.